So the first thing I'm going to do is block out the areas of white um, and black. Uh, so everything we want to keep is going to be white and everything we want to get rid of is going to be black. It's quite a, a lengthy process, uh, but that's what we're going to do. And we're going to start by selecting the lasso tool and really uh, using very broad strokes we're going to make a selection around the outside of the image and we're going to fill that with black and deselect and now uh, you can just about see her shoulders here but if you want to be absolutely sure that you're going to get the right area uh, you can click on the RGB channel at the top and then make this alpha one visible and then you will see in red um, the area of the mask and you, the, the shoulders are much clearer now so we can make that selection with the channel selected like so and again we're going to steer well clear of the edges at this stage because I don't want any um, solid areas of white encroaching on any of the finer detail that might blend with the background. Uh, so now we're going to fill that with white. And there you can see um, the area that's definitely going to be kept. And if we hide these, you can see now that that is a good solid area of white. Now we're going to zoom in and start, start working on it and um, touching it up much more precisely. So the first thing I'm going to get out of the way are these uh, shoulders. You can either create a path down here and then make a selection of the path, or you can use the brush. I'm just going to use the brush for now. If you have a tablet, then uh, that makes life much easier. So I'm going to make the brush reasonably hard, and I'm just going to brush down here to keep the shoulders. Going to make the brush a little less hard. So that um, those are the shoulders. So now I'm going to turn the white, uh, black and white contrast channel back on so that I can now go in and uh, take care of some of these areas of black. Now if you now command click on the alpha channel it will make a selection of that. Select inverse then you can start painting in uh, the areas of black right up to the, uh, the fine edge that you've just created without going too close to any of the hair. So that very quickly takes care of the shoulders down here. Don't go too close to the hair at this stage. Now, as you can see, there's an area here that it doesn't look as if it's selected, but it clearly has been. So I'm going to deselect and paint over that. Uh, sometimes when um, when there's a, a very fine bit of grey, uh, such as here. You, you don't actually see the little marching ants around it, um, but it doesn't mean it's not selected. So um, I'm now going to deselect and start filling in some of the areas of white. I'm going to opt for a, a soft brush now, uh, and I'm going to increase the size a little bit. And now I'm going to just fill in some of the areas around here that I know are going to be solid, that aren't going to be see-through. But I'm going to be very careful not to go over some of these areas, which clearly there is detail in. So I'm just going to check that I'm not going over anything here. So you can paint with the mask on if you prefer. Now over here, there's you can see a, a couple of little spikes coming in, and that is caused by those white steps jutting into the hair and 
Um, we're going to fix that uh, a little later using the clone stamp tool over here because uh, some areas of the image are simply irretrievable. Um, you're going to end up with a, a sort of an arrow pointing into a head. So, so some of this is going to have to be fixed um, in Photoshop using uh, other methods such as cloning. But we're going to do the very best we can. Okay, so that's pretty much taken care of the areas of white. I've gone as close as I dare to the edges. I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that little arrow now because I know I'm going to have to clone that later. Do the same here. Okay. So now uh, I'm going to change the uh, swatch, uh, reverse the swatches here so that I've, I'm now painting with black. Okay, so it hasn't taken too long to get to uh, something that is pretty close to the finished mask. What I'm going to do now is um, tie, try and tidy up these areas a, a little more because um, if I was to make a selection of this, which I'll do now, I'll go to the layers palette, duplicate the background, hide the original and apply the mask. You'll see that um, there are some areas that are encroaching here. There's quite a bit of um, black there. And if I create a gray background, create a new layer and fill it with 50% grey, you'll see that it's it's not too bad, but you can see some real problems here around the edges. Um, and some of these can be fixed very quickly by, uh, I'm just going to delete this layer mask, uh, by selecting the alpha channel, go select all, copy it, Click on the RGB, go back to the layers, and edit, paste to create a new layer with your channel. And then I'm going to duplicate that layer and multiply the top layer. And what that does is it gets rid of a lot of this hazing around the edge, as you can see. Now, it will get rid of some of the detail of the hair as well. So you might want to play with the opacity. It is a bit of a trade-off, uh, but um, it will save a lot of work um, getting rid of some of this, these halo effects. So now that that's done, I'm going to select those two. What I've done is I've put the uh, top layer down to 75% of the opacity, multiplied, and the bottom layer is on normal 100%. So I'm going to select those two and right-click on them and merge them. I'm then going to select all again, edit, copy, and turn off the visibility of that layer, go back to channels, create a new channel, and paste in my new channel. So now you can see the difference between those two. If I make a selection of the alpha 2, go back to the layers palette and make another mask. See that actually quite a bit of that haloing has now gone and uh, all we need to do really now is, is clean up some of these um, areas which have been effectively damaged by the background. So um, what I'm going to do is duplicate this layer just so that I'm working non-destructively again. I'm just going to keep a copy of that because I'm going to start um, cloning some of these areas uh, to fix them up. So I'm going to select the clone stamp tool over here in the tool palette. I'm going to keep the brush with a soft edge and a reasonable size, not too big. And I'm going to just clone some of these areas that really need attention. 
Now, if there's an area of white here, that is because, if you remember on that channel, I deliberately whited it out, which means that the white is actually the background image showing through the hair. So I'm just going to clone that area. Okay, so that's actually looking better. If you look at this uh, previous one, you can see that that's much improved. There are still some areas of haloing around here, but uh, that will be taken care of shortly. The amount of work that you do at this stage depends also on the kind of background that you're going to be using. Now, the background I'm going to put in is, is going to be quite a dark one. And that's going to work in my favour. But if it was a, a lighter one, then I may well have to do uh, some different types of work here. So moving on to the next step, once you're happy with this, the next thing I'm going to do is to duplicate this working layer. I'm going to multiply the one beneath. So if I turn off this new copy up here, you'll see there is what multiply does. Now, what that's going to do is get rid of any residual white haloing around the edges. I'm going to turn this upper one on, select all, and I'm going to delete with the mask selected. Next, to command click on the mask on this lower layer so that you make a selection of the fixed image and uh, then start to paint in using a large soft brush the areas in the middle. But uh, now if we open up the background that we're going to put in. Here it is. As I said, it's quite a dark one. And copy and paste that in behind these two, so over the grey layer. Then we get this result. Uh, now, as you can see, it's it's gone too dark around the edges, which is something we're going to have to work on. So, um, to combat that, if you duplicate the lower multiplied layer, set the middle layer to normal, um, and keep the one in the background on multiply and then lower the opacity of the middle layer and if necessary the multiply layer in the background as well. If you play around with those then you should start uh, to get the result that you want. Uh, so a little more work required there. That's uh, the result that we have on this image. So I'm, I'm reasonably pleased with the result there. Hopefully this will give you an idea of how to approach a particularly complex image like that. Uh, so I hope you found that useful. Please do take a look at some of the other material we have at graphicdesignemployment.com. Thanks for watching.